So we have a new CarPlay radio that's gonna go on this Jeep. So I was actually looking on Amazon for a radio with CarPlay and I found this one. This one's like a new design that I've seen on Amazon and I picked this up for $60 and I couldn't believe it because it has wireless CarPlay. And to me, honestly, this kind of looks like the BMW style radio because of the shape of the screen. It's pretty thin. And I also bought this one because it has knobs. So that's really the main reason I bought this. And for $60, I was willing to take the risk. So this is the box that it came with. Here are the specs if you want to read them. To connect this radio, you will need one of these metric kits. Depending on the year of your Jeep, I think 9901 uses this style here, which I have linked down below. And if you have the newer style, I'll have that linked as well. 2002 to 04, I believe is the newer style. We also got this uh, USB plug we're gonna be mounting as well. And you will also need one of these single DIN attachments for the Jeep. And this radio does come with all this stuff. So we have the attachment for the USB. This one goes back here and you could run off of it. Now this is interesting to me. It has a USB-C plug at the top and it has this adapter. So you can actually stick the adapter in there and connect a USB. And on this side is the SD card slot. It also comes with the remote controller and the microphone. Going back to these, I don't think we could use these when we have it mounted in this thing because you can see how much further it sticks up. So when I have it in place, you see how it's like uh, kind of tight. I don't think we'd be able to use those. So. No biggie, that's why I got the USB extension. So I am gonna take this off and install it into the single DIN attachment here. Then afterwards, you just gotta bend the tabs to hold that in place. Okay, so that is ready to go. Next thing to do is the wire harness. So like I said, this is the plug for the 99 to 2001. If you have a 2002 to 04, it'll be different. These are the plugs from the radio and they're pretty much color coded. Like the green black goes to the green black here, green green, pretty much color coded. So the only thing you have to pay attention to is the negative. I did put it on a spade connector so that I can unplug it from the car um, using a plug connector. Don't worry about that. One of the biggest things is gonna be making sure that you have the amp connected. I believe it's this blue one. It says e ANT, but I'm pretty sure that's the amp controller. So. Make sure you have that connected or else you will not get any audio on your Jeep. And I will use butt connectors to connect them. It's just easier and it doesn't bother me. All right, so we have the harness ready to go. Pretty much just matched all the wires. This one is orange. Usually is the dimmer that's coming from the factory harness. And then on this one, this specific radio, the dimmer was green. So just be aware of that. Read the labels on the radio itself. Those can vary, but most of them should be pretty much color coded. So now let's get this in the Jeep. I already have my old radio out, so we can put this one in. So here we are at the radio. I'm not sure what this wire is. The previous owner installed the radio. They also drilled the hole straight through the dash for the microphone, so I'm just gonna leave that there just because it's already there, so I'm not gonna mess with that. It plugs in the same way, so that'll work. Now I do want to run this USB piece, I think in, into here would probably be a good spot. So I'm gonna take off the screws and see what's behind there. And I should have enough room, we'll see. I just think it'd be cleaner to have the cable going from here since I usually put my phone in the cup holder. It'll just be way cleaner. So removing those two screws opens it up and it definitely looks like we have enough room in this area. So I'm gonna put it probably like straight forward here and I think it's gonna look good. So we're gonna use this to drill it out. The hole's about an inch, so I need to drill that. I think I'm gonna do it underneath these coin dispenser things. So like around here. So this is the finished product. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it flat onto the plastic. The plastic was too thin and there's a little lip on the plug itself. So when I would tighten it, it wouldn't actually sit flush all the way and it would be like moving around. So I took the little rubber gasket that comes with it and there's supposed to be a part that covers this. So I cut that off and I just use like that part as a washer and that's holding it really well. It's not moving anywhere and I like the position. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in. Okay, so we have that in and I just ran the plastic. I ran the cable underneath this plastic here and I'll connect it under here and hide it. But we have a USB plug and it looks mint. All right, so now we have the harness connected and the previous owner did break the vents off of the cover here, but I'm just gonna stick it back on since it does have the clips, it'll hold in place. But you can take these off and then plastic weld them back onto that piece. 
And if you're doing a double DIN radio, you actually need to take these two apart and then use this on the double DIN bezel itself and then plastic weld that. But for now, we're just gonna put this back on and then there is a right and wrong way on this. So make sure you verify that with the bezel because it only goes in one way. If you look at the edges, they are different. So I did take this piece off. You just pretty much pull it off, only two clips on each side. And I ran the cable for the phone. I ran the USB cable, it's underneath here. So we're gonna connect it here and then hide it behind this like that. And then we'll tuck it, zip tie it somewhere that's out of the way. And while we're here, we can actually do the dash light. So I'm gonna leave this off. Jeez, why would they drill through the freaking dash, man? I don't know. Anyways, let's continue with the radio install. So we got that back together. Now, before we actually click the radio into place, uh, we're gonna connect it, make sure it works, and then afterwards we'll finalize it. All right, so let's go ahead and test this. All right, and we got a radio now. Let's see. Oh. And we got music. We got music going. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in. All right, so that is in. That is what the radio looks like. The sides do stick out a little bit, but honestly, I do not think it looks bad at all. It looks really clean and I, obviously like the knobs is what I was going for. So this is the menu right here. Phone link is what you use for CarPlay. We got Bluetooth, Claw. <laughs> I'll go through the settings real quick. There's a lot of settings. Like I said, this is a $60 radio. Is it a little laggy? Yeah, I would say so. The CarPlay does work though. It does connect quick. Let me turn it on and then that way you guys can see. So we do got the CarPlay here. And like I said, this actually does work. It connects pretty quick. It is laggy, like I said. But for $60, it honestly plays the music well. And as long as you're in the main menu where it shows you the map and you put a location on, it actually it actually keeps up pretty well. And that's what really mattered to me. For $60, it's not bad, but I would honestly watch my video where I bought the, I believe a $90 radio. It was a single DIN as well. That one actually works really, really well. I'm happy with that one uh, over this one for sure. But for 60 bucks, I cannot complain. So that is the radio install for the $60 Amazon radio. At least that's what I paid for it. I'm not sure what it is right now on Amazon, but I'll have a link down below. Now, would I recommend it? I think if your budget is around that, around 50, 60 bucks, I think it's worth it. The CarPlay works. Um, when you plug in your phone, the map shows up. The map does not lag. But if you do try to scroll through the apps, that's when it does lag or through the menu itself. The nice part is it does have the knobs. The knobs work great, which I really like. The $100 radio that I have another video on, which is on my gold WJ, that radio works good too, but the buttons are on the screen. Like it's part of the software. There's no actual buttons. So I like the feeling of having the knobs. And like I said, for 60 bucks, I think it's a decent deal. There are definitely better radios, but you're going to be spending like 150, 200 bucks. But for $60, I think I recommend it if that's your budget. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below. Make sure to like the video, share it with a friend, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.